Good morning, dear students. Today, you are going to learn about the poem La Belly Dance and Mercy. This is a ballad and this is written by John Kitts. John Kitts is the most prominent figure in Romantic Age. In this poem, La Belly Dance and Mercy, which means the beautiful lady without mercy, John Keats tells us the story of the night. Dear students, in William Shakespeare's poem, All the World is a Stage, even Shakespeare talks about love. And the third stage of life, According to William Shakespeare, is the stage of a lover. And what does he talk about, the lover? He talks about the addiction of the lover to his beloved. In this stage of life, he is sad. And he recollects the memories of his beloved. And we see that he sings the song that he has written on the beauty of his beloved. So he's sighing like furnace, means he is burning in the agonies of love. In this poem, John Keats too tells us about the story of the knight who is burning in the agony of love. But one thing we should notice here that the knight's addiction to love results into destruction. He is destroyed. He is left alone. He is in pathetic, miserable condition because he nowhere thinks before falling in love that the lady he loves is the right kind of lady for him or not. Let us see the story that John Keats tells us about this night in this poem, La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. In the first three stanzas of the poem, we meet the speaker, who happens to find the knight on the cold hillside. And when he finds the knight on the cold hillside, he observes that the knight is in miserable, pathetic, condition and he questions him about it. Let us see what he asks the knight. Oh, what can ail the knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sage has withered from the lake and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail the knight at arms, so haggard and so oh, be gone? The squirrel's granary is full and the harvest is done. The speaker asks the knight, what can cure you? What can ail thee? Why you are wandering all alone? Why are you pale? Pale means sad. Why he is all alone? Why he is sad? And why he is wandering there on the cold hillside at the time of the year when the sage has withered from the lake? The sage has withered from the lake. What does it mean? It means the grass from the lake has become dry as there is no water and there is no birds to sing. Dear students, do you know that different species live in water? And water is a sign of life. As there is no water, there is no grass. As there is no grass, you don't find a bird there. This adds to the sad note in the poem. In the second stanza of the poem, the speaker once again repeats the same question, Oh, what can ail thee night at arm? So haggard and so oh be gone. The squirrel's granary is full and the harvest is done. He asks the knight why he looks so haggard and so oh be gone. The meaning of the word haggard is confused, baffled. And the meaning of Obigon is in sad condition. So he asks the knight, why you look so confused? 
Why? Why do you look so sad? At the time of the year when the squirrel has gathered its food for winter. And even the farmers have cut the crops and taken it home as the harvest is done. In the third stanza, the speaker throws light on the miserable condition of the night. Let us see what observation does he make here about the night in the third stanza. I see a lily on thy brow with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose fast wither too. The night's forehead is pale like a flower and it is moist with mental distress and fever, painful fever. Now, this throws light on the miserable condition of the night that is suffering from some mental distress. This speaker, who found the night's chicks once rosy, full of freshness, now notices that his chicks are fading fast. Now, in the fourth stanza and there onwards, we see that the night replies to the questions raised by the speaker. Let us see how does the knight replies. He says, I made a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairy child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. The knight replies to the speaker that he made a lady in the meadows. She was beautiful, and he thought that she was a fairy child. Her hair was long, her foot was light. He notices that there was a grace in her walk and her eyes were full of passion. What is the meaning of the word wild here? The meaning of the word wild here is passion. So her eyes were full of passion. So he met a, such a beautiful lady in the meadows. In this stanza of the poem, the knight says that he made a garland of flowers, he made bracelets too, and he offered these things to this beautiful lady. And as the garland and bracelets were made from flowers, this place was full of fragrance. After receiving these gifts from the knight, she looked at him as if she was in his love and made sweet moan. So this sweet moon on her part is a sign that she is in love with the night. And then I said her on my pacing steed and nothing else saw all day long. The knight says that he said her on his horse and they went on ride. As they went on ride, he saw nothing else except this beautiful lady. And as they went on the horse, she would bend from one side to the other and she would sing a fairy's song that was full of mysteries. Now, they stop somewhere and after that, let us see what does the knight say about this beautiful lady and the offerings she makes him. She found me roots of really sweet and honey wild and mana deep. And sure in language strange, she said, I love thee true. So they stopped somewhere and she found some nutritious, tasty, delicious roots and offered it to the night. She found honey and some heavenly food and offered it to the night. And after offering these things to the knight in a very strange language, she expressed her love and said, I love thee true. So after offering him roots, honey and heavenly food, 
she she took him to her cave let us see how does the knight describe his experience in the cave she took me to her elfin grot and there she wept and sighed full sore and there i shut her wild wild eyes with kisses poor so after offering him roots honey and heavenly food she took him to her elfin grot that is her cave and after taking him in that cave she started weeping she started crying and the knight saw the tears in her eyes and to soothe her he kissed her there and after that she lulled him asleep let us see what does the knight has to say about his dream and there she lulled me asleep and there i dreamed ah o oh, betide the latest dream i ever dreamed on the cold hill side i saw pelkings and princes to pale warriors step pel where they all they cried la belle dans sans merci had the interval so after offering him roots honey and mana dew she lulled him asleep and then he had a dream the most horrible dream he ever had in his life and when he had that dream he found himself on the cold hill side so this cold hill side is the reality of life that most of the time we 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 fail to see and we ignore and in his dream he saw the kings princes and warriors they were pale they were sad death fell where they all they were about to die why because this beautiful lady has already enslaved them and she had not offered any food and water to these kings princes and warriors so when they saw the knight they cried la belle dame sans mercy had the intral this beautiful lady without mercy has made you her slave this is the warning they gave him and then in the next part of the poem the knight shares his experience and says i saw their starved lips in the gloom with horrid warning gaped white and i awoke and found me here on the cold hill side and that is why i sojourn here alone and palely loitering though the sage is withered from the lake and no birds sing so the knight says that in his dream he saw the kings princes and warriors they were about to die he saw their starved lips they were hungry and thirsty and he saw them in the dying light when he saw them they gave him a morning and what is the warning that this beautiful lady has made him her slave the moment he realized it he woke up and found himself on the cold hill side so this cold hill side is the reality of life that he failed to see so here we learn that the knight at arms is deceived by the lady and this lady is very beautiful but she has no mercy for anybody and when he is deceived why he is deceived it is just because of his addiction to the lady when he falls in love he know where things whether that lady is the right kind of lady for him whether that lady is the right kind of choice for him or not so without giving a thought to this he falls in love he falls in love just because she is very beautiful is that the criteria to fall in love don't you have to think about the character of the person the temperament of the person you must have to see the person whether that person is good or not how is the nature of the person you have to see and when the knight realizes that he is deceived and he is destroyed he finds himself all alone he is in sad miserable condition and he says that is why i wander here i sojourn here all alone 
and miserable condition at the time of the year when the grass has become dry from the lake and there is no birds to sing. So this is what happens to the knight when he falls in love without giving a serious thought to whether this lady whom he follows is the right kind of lady for him or not. So this is the message that John Keats is giving in this poem, La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. Thank you very much for watching.